At the end of the video we did on PewDiePie, I mentioned that we might also be doing a video on video games. And today we're doing something like that. So just the other day, I read an article in the South China Morning Post, a main uh, Hong Kong newspaper, about an online game called PopCat. And I found this very fascinating. I hadn't heard about it. This is an extremely simple online game. I was showing you how it works. You simply click on a, an image of a cat and then a cat opens its mouth and makes a popping sound. And then the number of clicks are counted, uh, both of the, for the individual who clicks uh, and for the place nation where the person comes from. The whole game has 560 billion clicks by now, and the top six places are all from Asia, mostly East Asia. Uh, number one, Hong Kong, then Thailand, then Taiwan, uh, then Japan, then South Korea, and then Malaysia. And the South China Morning Post uh, article also talked about what could be called the kind of political background of the game, at least uh, in Hong Kong. And I quote just from the article, it says, players who have chalked up more than 121 billion clicks saying cities, that's Hong Kong, top ranking gives them sense of identity. So I want to focus on this very interesting phenomenon that playing such an extremely simple game can somehow contribute to giving people a sense of identity. Uh, before I, I do that, uh, I want to talk about some kind of vague uh, semblance between the PopCat game and the uh, even more famous a Squid Game, that is the TV series that was uh, immensely successful and that also comes from East Asia, namely from Korea. So I think uh, one form of parallel is that uh, both in the Squid Game and in the PopCat game, uh, there is something like a mixture between some very childish game uh, and a form of a monstrous identification through and with this game. Of course, in the case of the Squid Game, the monstrosity lies in the fact that people are giving their life away, that they basically die uh, while playing the game, but it's just a few hundred individuals. Now, in the case of PopCat, no one's dying, it's extremely harmless, but then you have these hundreds and hundreds of billions of, of clicks. So that is also some form of monstrous mass identification with such a childish game. Secondly, both games also show some form of addiction, which is something that uh, is often related to, to video games as well. So somehow the game draws you in and you somehow voluntarily submit uh, to its what could be called idiocy, right? So in the, in the Squid Game case, people voluntarily come back to play the game again, even they know that they will most likely die. Uh, and similarly, uh, also in this uh, extremely, uh, basically meaningless PopCat game, uh, people also kind of voluntarily submit to it and, and, and click over and over again. Uh, a third a parallel, slight parallel between PopCat and Squid Game is I think that there's a certain blurring between the players and the audience going on and I think that's important, right? In the Squid Game too, in the end you find out that uh, that one of the person who is the player also was the person who set up the game. So there's somehow um, a very kind of tight coupling between the players and the audience and that is much more obvious in the case of the PopCat game, where the number of clicks are immediately counted. So while you're playing, you're at the same time also viewing the game. So the, the playing and the viewing uh, are entirely uh, mixed into one. And this, of course, also means uh, that there's hardly an outside uh, to the game. Now, another thing uh, which is uh, interesting about the PopCat game, uh, and here it differs from the Squid Game, 
is that it exemplifies what I like to call uh, the East Asian cat religion, which by now has uh, spread more and more globally. So uh, I noticed this um, when I came to Macau six years ago, uh, how intense at that time already there was this kind of cat cult going on. Uh, so uh, this is, a, uh, to me, it is, 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 a, is a religious or pseudo-religious or in a sense a civil religious phenomenon. So it's of course completely secular uh, and it's also, uh, as the uh, PopCat game, it's very infantile. It's socio-politically harmless. There is a political element to the PopCat game, and we'll get back to that, but the cat religion in itself is very socio-politically harmless, differing from traditional religions, which were oft, often uh, socio-politically very dangerous. Uh, so there's nothing revolutionary or subversive to this uh, religion. And, of course, it's highly commodified, right? So. Uh, not only actual cats uh, now often cost a lot of money, but uh, there is this whole cat picture, especially industry and cat image industry around it. Uh, so that's also an interesting aspect of this cat religion, that it uh, operates largely virtually through images of cats. Now, of course, nevertheless, uh, there is this kind of massive worshipping of the cat image and also a massive emotional attachment to it, right? Uh, which is expressed in, it's, it's basically a concretization of, of this, what is called in Japanese kawaii or in, um, in Chinese keai, which literally translated means lovability. So uh, the cat is something that somehow is perceived as being lovable, and so it is an object that you can direct love and affection towards, which makes it, of course, somewhat religious. Um, and at the same time, it, again, this, this object of, of love and affection has something very cute, again, something very childish, very faintly uh, may be comparable to, for instance, the function of the, of the baby Jesus in Catholicism. So, a pop cat uh, also focuses centrally, literally, on the image of what I would call the East Asian new cat god, which is now uh, spreading all around the world. Now, going back to the point that the South China Morning Post was making about the game, uh, I quote here from the article, it says, It's a channel for Hong Kongers to display their sense of identity, declared real estate employee Carson Wu, 23, who claimed to be among the first in the city to play. So, uh, just let me explain, there is a certain political background uh, for the players in Hong Kong to it, and to a certain extent, I guess, also for players in Taiwan. Uh, namely, uh, in the case of both Hong Kong and Taiwan, the younger generation, since about uh, 10 or 20 years ago, um, began to strongly no longer identify themselves as uh, Chinese, right? And instead, they developed some form of localist identity, which was also very much at the background of the protests in, in Hong Kong. So this de-identification, national de-identification, uh, seems to be in part now being replaced by a form of uh, pride in the cliques from Hong Kong that is leading the table there uh, in, in the PopCat game. So what interests me besides the political aspect, which is also there, is the way in which identity is achieved or built in this case. And um, I think it's very clear that identity is built here in accordance with what I like to call prophylicities, an identity in the form of a profile. And uh, this is obvious because the identity is achieved here through massive social validation feedback loops, right? You just do this minimal action, you click on the picture, uh, but then immediately your clicks are counted. And um, not only for yourself, but also for the flag that you are clicking for. And so in this way, you submit yourself to a form of 
online uh, feedback mechanism which constructs a mass identity. Uh, interestingly also is that uh, we have again here this um, mixture of minimal activity, right? Uh, the game is played basically with only the, the most minimal physical activity. At the same time, uh, there is this maximal massive virtual effect of this little click. What happens there, I think, is an amalgamation with what I am calling the general peer. There is an immediate emergence of a profile identity uh, that exists only in this ever-growing number of clicks next to a certain flag. And otherwise, this identity is basically non-existing and empty. So, while in the case of Hong Kong and perhaps Taiwan, there is a political aspect to it, uh, this political aspect, I, I think, clearly is missing in most of the uh, other flags that are taking part in the uh, competition. Uh, so, I think what is much more going on here than a political profile building is a mass profile building in a kind of non-political, infantile and de-embodied way. Politics can be an amplifier, a catalyst uh, to this in uh, the cases we just mentioned, but I don't think it is central to the phenomenon. I think it's of secondary importance, unlike what the uh, South China Morning Post article suggests. I think the game shows the rise in profilicity. Right? It's a massive social validation feedback loop. It's general peer-oriented, and it is clearly driven by a virtual reality, uh, which then provides identity to a huge mass of participants. Importantly, this profile identity is game-like. So it is something that uh, you do not identify with in the traditional sense of identifying with a specific role in, for instance, the family or so, that, that you then sincerely commit to. So it lacks this form of sincerity. And of course, it also clearly lacks authenticity, right? You're just a number. Uh, there is no originality or uniqueness in this form of identity. And, of course, this is very important, uh, you can play many different games. People do not do this all the time. They just do it for a while and then somehow uh, the game withers away. And maybe when we actually uh, post this video, the game uh, will already uh, have lost much of its popularity and will have been replaced with, with other games. So that's also typical for a profile identity, that it's very instant, that it's just one of many identities, and uh, that um, it also withers away very soon. So we leave a link to the game in the description so you can try it out yourself.